In this video, I wanted to go over two ways that I like using Sutori in my math classroom. The first is this project that we do about midway through the year when we're starting to connect new understandings with our old ways of doing things. We know that learning really sticks when students are able to connect the new material with old understandings and put that full picture together for themselves. So the goal of this project is about that type of thing. In AP Calculus, for instance, we learn the limit definition of a derivative early on in the year, and then we learn the shortcut later, and we learn more efficient ways to solve problems throughout the year. And so the goal of this project is for students to say, here the student, for instance, said finding the distance traveled, new and improved. So before this is how they did it, they just took a snapshot of something they had done before in the section 3.8, and then this is their new way of solving this with their new understanding of integrals now that we are much later in the school year. In doing this project, I don't tell them which questions to do or even which sections to focus on. That's their responsibility to kind of look back at their old work and rediscover how they might solve those problems. And so this is also a great way for students to review past work and to get them to look back at that and really reflect. And so in this student's project, this student did a little do you know for something cool, a connection to a real life application. Here, they look back at an old quiz. The student recognizes that I only knew how to solve. I didn't really understand how to visualize it, but then they had a more visual understanding of this concept later on, and so that's what they showed there. Here, they had solved the find the instantaneous velocity problem with a limit definition, and now they have a much, much shorter method to solve it by this time of the year, and so the student explains that there. So for each little point that they put in, they also reflect on what new understanding they have to make it a really reflective activity. Here, they just popped in a little quiz for fun. Maybe if their classmate is doing this, that they can review some of their derivative rules. And then again, looking at things algebraically versus graphically is something that we always do in the course. And so using Sutori, it's just so easy to plop in visuals of any kind. It's easy to plop in videos if the student needs to do that. The beauty of this is that the student can just put everything all in one place. And it's a really reflective activity because they can put in, you know, even here's a video, and they can put in a little caption, this is why you might do it, or this is what I learned. And this final section here is the Flipgrid final reflections, takeaways, and goal setting that we have. And so students just embed their Flipgrid. I've set up a Flipgrid where they can post all their Sutori entries to, so students can just talk to the camera directly and kind of talk things out to the camera, really goal set, reflect on what they've learned through activities. And it's just a nice way for me to see the students didn't talk things out. I get a lot from seeing their expression and all of that. So this is a nice thing to change up the pace from, you know, always having written work and text and typing to just allow students to chat things out. So all they do is they record in the Flipgrid that I've already set up for them and then they just copy the share link right into Sutori and paste it in. And then I just press the play button. In this way, the student's able to talk to the screen and reflect. And that's what the student has chosen to do here is to just do some final takeaways, some goal setting forward. That's something we do a lot of in the class using Flipgrid and the student's able to just put it all in one place in Sutori so that they have this really nice final project of what I've learned at this point in the year, looking deeply back all the way from the beginning of the course till now, reflecting on new understandings and how that relates to what we had done earlier in the year. So this is a powerful activity all in one place, all documented in Sutori. Another thing that we use Sutori for is before the AP exam, as we're in test prep mode, students just document what they're doing on a daily basis right here in Sutori. So they tell me what they had studied because I give them a lot of different options and I want them to just document that so that I know what they're doing. But also, I want to know what questions that they have so I know what to focus on in class. So here the student says, here are the topics that I studied, here are the specific questions that I studied, and here are the questions that I have. And then I can just look at that and know what 
questions I need to assign more than class, maybe to the whole class, or maybe just to specific students, or just give more options in their bank of things to pull from. So this is just great as they're working, they know where to put their questions all in one place. They just keep going back to this tutorial day after day. We do this for about two weeks and every day they just document what I did, what I have questions on, goals and weaknesses, so they know what they should do moving forward. It's just a way to quickly jot down everything that's on their mind in one place so that they don't forget. They also can take any notes here. So the student was just studying some of the derivative rules that she probably forgot. And so she just kind of put them there as a reminder, some limit rules to remember for the AP exam. Then the next day here, these are the topics that she studied, more derivatives rules. She was trying to memorize them all. I, I'm not big on making students memorize all these things all throughout the year. So we do cram them right before the AP exam for the ones that they need to know for that exam. And then here was a question that she had reviewed and that she needed a little bit more work on. So she plopped it right there. And then that's a little note to me. Oh, maybe I'll assign another one of these questions for review, or maybe that'll be a good warm up activity for us to do. So that kind of thing happens. Um, you can see here, the student was able to just take a picture of actually they were doing an AP free response question. They took a picture of their work and they just plopped it right in here so I could see what they had done. If they had any questions, they would have asked them there. So here are some questions that they had, and I was able to respond to that student, go right to them, know before class even started what I needed to do. So this is just such a simple way for students to document, you know, what they're doing, their learning process, which is so important, is the process of them working. How do we see that? A lot of times we just see their final product at the end on a test, on a quiz, on a paper. You can even use this as they're writing a paper for them to document the process. What did they do each day? What piece of the paper did they work on? If they're building a website, what piece of the website did they work on? They can take little screenshots of the website being built to see it in action as it grows over time. And again, it's just so easy to just for students to, you know, press the plus sign and they can just add in the text if they want. We do a lot of images, so they add in the images and then they can add in a little caption if they want to reflect on it or if they want to ask any further questions for me to see. And um, yeah, I love it because it's just all in one place and students just continually edit their one tutorial instead of having to turn in a bunch of different documents for a bunch of different days. And it looks like a timeline, so it's nice to have on a daily basis, they just write the date as a heading and then they write what they've done under that. So those are some of the ways I love using Sutori in my math class.